I guess even though we were free, we were still slaves in the mind. Message! What's going on, family? Thank you for tuning in to another episode. It's your guy, Boro, the lucky Libra here, all right? And as you can see by the title, we're going to be discussing the energies of the Scorpio Zodiac sign. So if this is your first time here, welcome. All right, I hope I'm able to increase, enlighten, elevate your knowledge on astrology and Scorpios in particular. If you have a sun in Scorpio, rising Scorpio, moon sign Scorpio, all right? So... As I was editing this video, I accidentally deleted the first part, which is this part I'm redoing right now, which is like the little intro part. So I'm, 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 I'm a, we're going to cut right into the video and get into the information. But the way we're going to be breaking down the Scorpio Zodiac archetype is by breaking down the house it comes out of, breaking down the element modality and the planets that are either home, exalted, away, or detriment in Scorpio. All right? And after that, we're going to basically conclude everything up. So if you have your sun, your moon, your rising, your Mercury, your, your Mars, your Venus, whatever it is you have in Scorpio, then now you already have a, a pre-basis of a knowledge of what type of energies are in this uh, constellation. All right. So let's get right into it, y'all. So when we talk about the energies that um, the eighth house governs, the eighth house governs uh, sex, which is just the joining of two energies your partner's resources or other people's material resources, um, transformation, uh, death, which these are just the same thing. Death is transformation. No, no such thing as true death is only transformation because right now your spirit is what's making this vessel move. And after this physical vessel expires, then your spirit is going to go in, go into another, uh, back into the vibration, back into the frequency, uh, shape and form of things until it reincarnates or incarnates into a reality. Um, occult mysticism okay and all mysticism is is communication with the unknown okay so you know we do this all the time uh you're in class and your teacher says something funny and you look at your classmate and you don't say nothing but y'all both thought the same thing you know exactly what y'all just communicated to each other like yo she's fucking stupid that was funny all right so that's mysticism we do that every day okay uh and everything is behind the scenes and in the dark Okay, the eighth house is dark. It ain't no lights here. You gotta feel your way out. You gotta feel the vibration out this motherfucker, all right? And then that thing you're gonna, and, and while you're in the eighth house, you're gonna run into occult and esoteric uh, uh, type things because occult and esoteric um, information is information that's hidden, okay? So this is why you're running into these things because this is what you're finding in the dark, all right? So, this is why Scorpios carry that demeanor, have that aura, have that type of that nature to them. You know, they 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 ain't just uh, a lot. You can have you can have every talkative uh, a Scorpio because my, just because you're one sign doesn't mean you know you're exactly the way the archetype is because other placements in your chart may enhance other things, whether it's communications, your emotions. You could be a, an emotional earth sign. You can be a very uh, you, you can be emotional air sign. You can be a logical fire or water sign. All right. So it's more so about your placements with this energy that's the, that it's cultivated with your sun sign. All right. So, but this is why Scorpios, you know, uh, uh, the, most of their orders and their actions is predicated towards, you know, being investigated. Because they, they, in their mind and they, through their life experiences, they go through things being in the dark or through situ a lot of experiences and situations in the dark or behind the scenes. So they're actually investigating the behind the scenes realm and whatnot and dealing with uh, esoteric and occult like things. Always, they like, they, more, most people that are Scorpios, that have like sun, moon, Mercury, rising Mercury, uh, Scorpio signs, you know, they're comfortable with mysticism. You know, they're comfortable with being able to communicate without saying too much. You could be always with a Scorpio in a relationship, and it's like, damn, she always talking to me, but she don't be saying much. You ever, If you dating a Scorpio, I know you felt like that before. This motherfucker always talking to me, but sometimes don't even be saying shit, all right? So that's that's like, a, that, that, that eighth house energy is what, you know, uh, inflicts into a Scorpio, all right? You talk about sex talk about transformation you talk about depth these are all you know root chakra and chance and energy energies dealing with the other uh, other sex as well all right so scorpios know about relating yeah their, yeah their feelings and emotions may be real dense and 
inside and, and real cold like and icy and it takes a lot to melt that ice and get them to open up but they there and once they there they could be some of the most loyal motherfuckers and they could love hard so this is part of the reason why they also why they 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 stay to them feelings being cold and inside and dense because they know that they love hard for the right motherfuckers, all right? So if you're in a Scorpio circle, know that that Scorpio will fuck with you heavy because they just don't like having motherfuckers in their circle just to have them in their circle, all right? So, um, you know, that's the eighth house energies. Now Scorpio is ruled by Mars and co-ruled by Pluto. Okay, the reason why Pluto co-rules, because when we talk about Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, these planets, these planets are farther outer, so they influence us from a farther perspective while other planets are hitting us closer because they're closer. You know, the Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, uh, Venus, the influences are hitting us closer. Neptune, uh, Uranus, and Pluto, those are, those are, Pluto used to be the Sun. You feel me? So they, these are generational planets. They, it's like our grandfathers, our grandparents, pretty much, right? So when we talk about uh, Mars, we know Mars is our passions, goals, passions, desires, our fire, our uh, our intentions. Okay. So with that here, and Pluto is just all everything Mars is, but the higher octave. So deep passions, desires, and goals, deep transformation. All right, so, you know, just to make a little analogy, you know, if Pluto, if Mars is scoring 30 points in a game, Pluto is winning MVP of the tournament. Is is long, is the long-term goals, deep dot desires and passions, you feel me? If, if, if uh, Mars is uh, getting food, getting some takeout, Pluto's grocery shopping, you feel me? So, um, here, this is why Scorpios, and it's fixed water, fixed signs know how to be consistent. So, uh, because they can stay fixed on something. So with Scorpios, they can be fixed with their emotions and but fixed with their desires, passions, and goals and hone in on it for a while. Like I said, hone in is a key word when we're dealing about Scorpios talking about desires, passions, and that Mars energy, because it's fixed water. So your desires, your desires, passions, and goals, this is internal. These are your emotions. These, your passion is a feeling. This is a feeling that you have. So these things are, they, Scorpios know how to hone in on these things for, for a while. So this is why they can create real deep desires or, or have a real deep passion for something because they done honed in on that feeling, emotion, and that thing for so goddamn long, they let that shit bubble inside them, all right? So, uh, and there's emphasis like secrecy with Scorpios too because like we said, we're in the eighth house, there's a dark house. So we're dealing with all different types of communication and things here now to, in order to navigate around this motherfucker in the eighth house, okay? Now, um, uh, motherfucking, what don't like to be here? Venus don't like to be in this motherfucker. <laughs> Venus don't like to be here, all right? Venus don't like to be here. Okay, and what is Venus? How we compromise, relate, how we love, how we value others. Okay, where we find pleasures, where we may indulge. Key word, where we may indulge, overindulge. Find attachments, get attached to things. Where we might have to put refinements on our pleasures. That's Venus. So when you put Venus in the eighth house, it's like shit. This is, this is, this is the young kid that... There's the young kid doing whatever the fuck he wants to do, have sex and taking drugs at a young age, and it can't. It, 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 it's it, it's pleasures is in the eighth house, so things that's behind the scenes, things that's done in the dark, sex is done in the dark. Niggas is taking drugs and getting into certain activities in the dark. Niggas is getting into crime. Niggas is like you feel me? Like think about energies that take place in the dark. So when you put Venus here, these are the things you find pleasure in. These are the things you're attracted to. But this is also being attracted into the occult, metaphysics, um, you know, occult, occult like esoteric energies as, as well. This is why Scorpios may have a real attraction towards learning about these spiritual concepts and these mystic concepts, all right? Like I said, the eighth house, this is a mystic house. This is the first mystic house in the Zodiac now we're talking about, okay? The eighth, ninth, uh, eighth, ninth, uh, eleventh, twelfth house. Those are mystic houses in the Zodiac. So you wanna check how much planets you got up in the house, but we gonna make a video about them too, about that too. So, um, yeah. Yeah, this is how this is how this is how it plays out with uh, Venus here. Venus our relationship, so you know, best believe motherfuckers that got Venus and Scorpio, they they some freaks. 
they 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 love they're, they're nasty they love they love uh, some a deep passion a, a high vitality sex real real meaningful god damn that sex felt good type sex with venus and scorpio venus in the eighth house okay the sexual energy super entices these people okay because you know the eighth house deals with that connection with the connection and and, and creation of others because it's transformation and it's and it's dealing with the sex energy okay so when we talk about sex this is not even this is not even so much about the creation of a new en energy but it's just about the joining of the two energies. So yeah, Scorpios, it is about connecting. Best believe it. Just in just just because they may look a, a bit reserved or whatnot, or they take a minute to open up, they don't mean they're not about connection. Just go about it a different way. All right. So um, that's uh, that's this this is why. Uh, uh, but at the same time, with Venus, uh, Venus basically not liking to be here. Okay, you know. This is, it makes relationships and relating to others hard for Scorpios, the people with a lot of Scorpio energy, all right? Because they're fixed with their emotions, all right? And sometimes that, get, that can get in the way because relationships are about relating and compromising and valuing each other's kind of, uh, uh, mindsets, mindsets, emotions, and feelings and what the other person care about. So when you have fixed emotions, sometimes it's hard for you to communicate that. Sometimes Scorpios have a problem. They, they know they have the emotions and feelings for somebody, but it's so much work because it's been in there and been down there for so long. It's so much work to work it back up to communicate it out to somebody. So like uh, Scorpios may have a roadblock trying to get that shit out and that can get in the way of relationships. But you know, you guys are gonna learn to deal with them things throughout life or whatnot. And this is how the energies act out, play out with Venus falling here. Then the moon don't like to be in this motherfucker. The moon sleep in this motherfucker, all right? The moon is sleep in Scorpio. Okay, what is the moon? Moons are emotions, our feelings, uh, our reactions. Okay, so you know, Scorpio might not even give you a motherfucking reaction if you don't feel like you deserve it. Like, uh, the reaction they'll give you won't even be so much of a uh, like they ain't really caring about. Like, Scorpios is like the best sign. Like, if you give them en their certain energy, best believe they're gonna use that energy. They're gonna make sure you know what type of energy that you just gave them. Like if you're throwing subliminal shots at a Scorpio, they may not even verbalize uh, back to you or react in the way you want to react, but you gonna know that they know what you're trying to do and they ain't fucking around with you. Like like Scorpios have a way of communicating that shit to you. But the moon uh, falling here, you know, this makes emotions and feelings it's motherfucking sleep <laughs> sometimes. Like, like uh, Scorpios, you know, they may just, they are about connection because there's water here, it's just, Eight pounds governs transformations and whatnot, but at the same time, like I said, because it's also fixed and the moon is sleep here, it's like nigga, my emotions is dead. My like Scorpios could get to a point where whether relationship trauma thing or something being placed in so many transformations early in life and whatnot, it builds a temperament where they, the niggas is cold hearted. They uh, uh, like the moon, the moon ain't as nurturing, put it like that, all right, but at the same time. You know, once they get an influence in their life that helps them to open up, help them to get tapped back into their moon and get more into it, either nurturing, connecting, or, or or nature using the emotions and expressing and, and expressing them a little bit better or something, then uh, uh, Scorpio could realize, you know, it can connect on a level it thought it can never connect on before. So Scorpios, don't be uh, when you feel like you should be connecting or should be opening up and it's a little hard and you and you're thinking you 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 should be more you'll be more comfortable if you fall back you know push yourself sometimes you know try try sometimes when you feel like it's reason when you when you in your head think it's reasonable and you should give something a shot all right open it's hard i know it's hard but you know try to push yourself sometimes because at the same time you're gonna realize like damn i didn't even know i could get into this emotional space because it's been a minute i've been hidden with my emotions and feelings for so long okay so this is how it plays out with you know the moon falling here all right but you know that is the archetype of the Scorpio zodiac sign where you have the sun, moon is your rising, you got a Venus in there, you got a Mercury and that Mars in there, whatever it is, all right? So, uh, you already know what it is. Make sure y'all like, drop some requests, comments. Y'all already know what it is. Board of Lucky Libra. Next, we get into the Sagittarius zodiac sign. Just smell me, okay? And y'all know how to get in contact with me. The email there and everything and all that. But 
for now. You got Boro tuning in and tuning out. Peace.